ahead. A very happy Friday to you at 12.09 in the West. Talk Radio 790 KABC, the John Phillips Show. Broadcasting live from the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Living Room Studios. Mr. Randy Wags at the sports desk across the glass. John, it has been quite some time because the city council was in recess for a month and then I was on vacation for a week, but it finally happened. In fact, it happened a day after Kevin DeLeon protester Jason Reedy was going to face no charges, Kevin DeLeon as well, for that fight back in December. But the L.A. City Council was disrupted by people cursing out Kevin DeLeon. Hey, let me set up the scene for you. There was a big proclamation because it's uh, Fernando Valenzuela Day here in Los Angeles. And then they were transitioning from the Fernando Valenzuela Day proclamation to the Korean Independence Day proclamation, really doing the important business of the city. And in the middle, when everyone was shuffling around and moving around, somebody started screaming... And at this point, Paul Krikorian's got to get on the mic and do some screaming. Wait, who's doing the cackling in the background? <laughs> I don't know. Kevin Davion's a racing nigga. All right, we're, we're going to res- we are going to resume the meeting. We are resuming our meeting now with a presentation by Mr. Lee. Mr. Reedy, don't disrupt this meeting. No one here will disrupt this meeting. Sit down and be silent so we can proceed with our work. There will be no disruptions of this meeting. Anyone who shouts out will be excluded from this meeting. Whoever is shouting out right now, that's your last warning. Oh, he's pulling a Janice Hahn. He needs Janice to issue the warning because people only take it seriously when it comes from her. That's your final warning. Council President for the... Whoever is shouting out right now, that's your last warning. And council president, for the record, is the uh, Asian gentleman with okay. the stripe. Okay, the, stripe the guy with the, the mask, mask on the right-hand side, I've warned him twice. Be silent or you'll be removed. He's not going to be silent. No. And you know the guy that he's referencing first, Jason Reddy, who is the one that got involved in the physical altercation with Kevin DeLeon. When he shows up to these council meetings, screaming profanity at the top of his lungs, he brings his baby with him and has his baby strapped to his chest. Father of the year. As he's screaming profanity as loud as he possibly can. That's this guy. (laughs) There was a picture of it that ended up in the newspaper. And Robin Abkarian, who's a columnist at the L.A. Times, a a left-wing liberal democrat essentially wrote that this is not a good way to raise your child you shouldn't be screaming profanity at the top of your lungs at a meeting with your baby strapped to you you shouldn't bring a baby to a city council meeting that's not in a good neighborhood of course not and man did the twitter world roast robin abkarian calling her a racist and every name in the book for making that point this is why I haven't dug into it yet, but this guy, Jason Reedy, now hosts a podcast called the People City Council Podcast. I don't even want to touch it because I don't want those people going after me. No, because they just have no sense of decorum at all. No, but since his name was invoked, although very, very, very foul language, I feel like it is in our contract that if Kevin DeLeon's name is mentioned, John... It's time for the pledge. Let's hear it. Madam President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Mr. De Leon, can you please um, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning? Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. It would be an honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Under visible, uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What a great way to start a Friday. The classics just never get old. 
800-222-KABC is the telephone number, 1-800-222-5222. For four years here in Los Angeles County, we had a battle that started almost on day one and never really ended. And that battle was between our dear sheriff, Alex Villanueva, and the L.A. County Board of Supervisors and our horrific district attorney, George Gascon, where we essentially had one advocate for law and order, one advocate for getting rid of the homeless encampments, and everyone else was an enabler. Quite frankly. And they never stopped fighting, and the council tried to kill this man's career almost from the beginning, and eventually they were successful And now we have a situation where everyone's on the same page. Let the homeless take over and destroy everything. Well, it's not just in Los Angeles County where they're having this battle. They're also having this battle up in Sacramento. And, Randy, it's getting heated. That's right. You've got now a war of words between the mayor of the city of Sacramento, Daryl Steinberg, who is also this jackass's homeless czar. I don't know why we're so damn sheepish. And the new district attorney of Sacramento County, Tin Ho, a man who was supposed to come on this show when I did a topic about the music at the metro stations that offended him and he canceled. His name is Tin Ho. It's Tin Ho. Maybe he canceled because he heard about the Mark and Brian controversy. (laughs) We're not owned by the same company anymore. I thought that was John and Ken. That was a different one. (laughs) Anyway, the Sacramento DA wants to sue the city of Sacramento for not enforcing homeless ordinances. The mayor didn't like that didn't take too kindly to that so he called a press conference to call out the da and when you've got elected officials a feuding you know we're gonna cover it you ready johnny that's right and i'll tell you this i can tell you before even hearing the piece i'm with the hoe Tin hoe of course yes i'm gonna continue to have my city being threatened by someone who's not doing his part boy that is a threatening voice daryl steinberg oh yeah Could you sound any bitchier if you tried? He sounds a little like a prospector from 1848. I'm going to continue to have my city being threatened by someone who's not doing his part. I imagine him with a corncob pipe. I don't know. You know what he kind of sounds like to me? What's that? The man on the street in West Hollywood. (laughs) Our buddy. Ooh, this doesn't look too good. As the city of Sacramento struggles to solve the homeless crisis, Mayor Daryl Steinberg publicly slamming the district attorney today. This comes after... You notice they don't say the district attorney's name? Well, they don't want to get in trouble either. This comes after Sacramento... He's a decorated prosecutor. He put away the Golden State Killer. Well, yeah. Well, If you were here during the Mark and Brian controversy, <laughs> you wouldn't want to take all those classes either. I was at KFI during the John and Ken controversy. So you had to take the classes. This comes after Sacramento County District Attorney Ten Ho sent a letter threatening to prosecute city officials for their inaction. Thanks for joining us tonight for Fox 40 News at 5. I'm Nikki Lorenzo. And I'm Eric Harriman. Fox 40's Zach Boetta was at the mayor's press conference earlier today. He joins us live tonight at 5 with more on what he had to say as well as the district attorney's response to it. Zach. Eric Nicky, good evening. This letter from the district attorney details what he calls the decisions and indecisions by the city leading the DA to take steps toward legal action. Now the mayor says... This is refreshing. A DA that actually wants to do something on the right side of the issue. Good for him because you can't force these duly elected officials to do their job when their policy position is to not do their job. But if you can get creative and sue them and create all kinds of drama that highlights their inability to complete the basic tasks that they're supposed to do, and they put their hand on the Bible and took the oath and agreed to do, then do whatever it takes. Well, and you have so many elected officials. This is going on right now in San Francisco where they say there's nothing we can do because we keep getting sued by the activists. So how about we get sued by the other side as well? Then you'll get forced to have to do something about it. Leading the DA to take steps toward legal action. Now the mayor says 
He's had enough, and it's time for the DA to step up and to help the city. Sacramento's bitter fight between the city and county to solve homelessness grew to a new level Tuesday when City Mayor Daryl Steinberg called for the county district attorney, Thin Ho, to quit the email antics and work with the city. Mr. Ho. I mean, that's his name. Yeah. Work with the city. Mr. Ho, you seem to want to abdicate your job to me, the city attorney, and to the city. Please, sir. There, there is nothing more pathetic than a politician doing a press conference to straw man talk to the person you're pissed off at. That's right. While reading it, not even talking from the heart. You seem to want to abdicate your job to me, the city attorney, and to the city. And by the way, under this guy's mayorship, homelessness in Sacramento has gone up sixfold. And here's something that's scary. If Rob Bonta decides to run for governor instead of for re-election as attorney general, Daryl Steinberg is going to run for attorney general. Well, the only saving grace with that is I don't know if this guy could get out of the primary. Every um, type of leadership is about meeting the moment and rising to the occasion. And this is what's required. And so we're stepping up and, and getting it done. <laughs> Please, sir, do your job. The press conference comes almost a day after You know what he sounds like? Who's that? That guy sounds like Pip from Great Expectations. <laughs> Please, Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> Please, sir, do your job. The press conference comes almost a day after the district attorney sent the city a letter detailing his frustrations of inaction and calling on the city to act now. The first paragraph of the letter says, quote, Over the last six years, Sacramento's unsheltered population has increased by over 250 percent. We have a public safety crisis that is endangering both the unhoused and the housed. Our community... Do we have to call them the unhoused? No. No, you don't. Stop doing it. Stop doing it, elected officials. Stop doing it, news media. They're homeless. They're vagrants. They're bums. Now, John, have you ever been at a cocktail party and introduced yourself and say, hi, my name is John, I'm housed? No, because at that cocktail party, you would also have to give your pronouns. <laughs> hi, I'm John, I'm housed, he, him, his. <laughs> Our community is caught between compassion and chaos as we reach a breaking point that requires... Ten Ho knows his alliteration. Compassion and chaos as we reach a breaking point that requires action. The letter comes just seven days after the city council passed a more aggressive homeless response plan and handed off the authority of new safe ground campsites to the city manager. But Mayor Steinberg says his recent efforts to get the DA to sit down and hash out a plan to work together have gone unanswered. I wanted to see if we might work together. That was July the 26th. Today is August the 8th. I reminded him once last week that uh, still would like to talk. Heard nothing. Yesterday at 10 minutes to 5. Well, he's definitely going to answer the phone after this press conference. <laughs> Got a copy of his second missive. Not gonna missive? Where is this guy from the 1910s? <laughs> got a copy of his second missive. Not going to continue to have my city being threatened by someone who's not doing his part. I'm asking him to fund community prosecutors, to commit to more, uh, to more broad diversion, to fight for more... Wait, so you want him to not do his job? Yes. He's not doing his job, and he's pissed that the DA is doing his job, so he's calling on the DA to stop doing his job. This is almost getting Bravo level with the feud in. To fund community prosecutors, to commit to more, uh, to more broad diversion, to fight for more resources for the courts, and to partner with me with uh, the county to make sure that the services are provided. Mayor, wait, that's not any of his job. No, no. What he's asking the DA to do is to become another enabler just like him. Mayor Pro Tem Mai Vang and District 5 Councilmember Katie Maple also joined the mayor in his address, backing him for his willingness to collaborate and calling on the DA. They had nothing better to do. No. No, because the DA doing his job highlights what kind of pathetic failures the rest of them are. Backing him for his willingness to collaborate and calling on the DA to do the same. Let's come to the table. Let's work together. We can only... That means nothing! It's just like Rob Bonta. One... Useless cliche after another. Every um, 
type of leadership is about meeting the moment and rising to the occasion. And this is what's required. And so we're stepping up and, and getting it done. Please stop electing buckets full of cliches. When you have nothing useful to say, that's what you have to do to take up time. Let's come to the table. Let's work together. We can Let's only... roll up our sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet this moment. Let's come to the table. Let's work together. We can only create good change in this city by working together. And so we need you at the table, too, along with everyone else. She said absolutely nothing. I know nothing about this woman, but just hearing her talk and hearing the words that she uses, she has a room temperature IQ. Roughly two hours after the press conference, the DA, in response to the mayor, said in a statement, quote, This local crisis has been made worse by local decisions and indecisions. Therefore, we have taken the first formal steps toward litigation against the city of Sacramento. However, we are providing the city an opportunity to adequately address this public safety crisis, end quote. Start enforcing the laws on the books or we're going to sue you and make you. Good for him. Can someone please sue the city of L.A. or the county of L.A.? I mean, they're getting sued every 10 seconds, but not for this specific issue. No, maybe that's what we've been doing wrong. Maybe we need to get in on the action and just sue them, too. So back out here live. In- I mean, you notice ever since uh, Julie Hamilton crew sued the fake doctor, she hasn't had any press conferences now, had she? Oh, the fake doctor flew away on her broom and went away. And hasn't had a press conference since. Yeah. So back out here live in front of City Hall. When it comes to enforcement, both sides want it. The mayor wants the district attorney to prosecute on misdemeanor charges. And if someone charged or prosecuted needs some mental health help, then they send them to the diversion program. As well. That means you don't want to prosecute them. That's right. That means you give them a court date and they don't show up and that's the end of it. They send them to the diversion program is what they're calling it. But also the D.A. wants the mayor to and the city to enforce those city codes and those city ordinances. But they can't seem to agree on when to get together to make all this work. And the biggest thing is how to fund it all. Reporting live in front of Sacramento City Hall, I'm Zach Boetto, Fox 40 News. All right, so there you have it. At least one public official in Sacramento is doing his job. The rest of them, not so much. And this is all important because the number of crimes that are being committed by the homeless in Sacramento has exploded. If you want to email the show, you can do so at johnnydontlikeshow at gmail.com. That's johnnydontlikeshow at gmail.com. And, Randy, if you're going away on a trip this weekend, maybe going to the Colorado River, maybe going to Palm Springs or San Diego, and you want something to listen to on your road trip, you can listen to us. That's right. This show is portable. Go to kbc.com, click on podcast, go to the Apple Podcasts app, iHeart, Spotify, search for The John Phillips Show, hit subscribe. You can download all the episodes. You can search for John Phillips Show on YouTube as well. There are so many different places to listen, so whenever you're away, you can listen to us. We'll be gone this weekend as well, but we will be back on Monday. I'll be back. Get out. Going back to the battle that's going on right now in Sacramento between the district attorney and the mayor who refuses to do anything about the homeless crisis. Well, as it so happens, we now have all the latest numbers as to just how many crimes the homeless are committing in the state capitol. That's right. Sacramento County Sheriff released a new report on all of the previously unreported crime that is happening by the homeless and to the homeless. And most of the crimes that happen to the homeless are happening by the homeless. It's funny how that works out. For more, here's more Fox 40. Well, Nikki and Eric, simply put, the sheriff says that these numbers are troubling. It's data that covers criminal activity across all homeless encampments across Sacramento County. And they started jotting those numbers down back at the start of the year in January. All the- That's the first time they thought to document it? Well, this is something that needs to happen in Los Angeles. Because one of the tricks that Gascon and Garcetti and the rest of them use is crime is actually not going up. That's your feelings. That's your emotions. You're manipulated by the news media. But if you look at the stats, if you look at the numbers, crime is actually going down. Well, it's because they manipulate the way the stats are put together. If you actually 
account for all of the crimes that occur, even if it's not something that's logged by the police department, the numbers are far greater. And that's what they're trying to do in Sacramento to get an accurate idea of just exactly what's going on. So you're saying these police agencies need to lead from the front. We often lead from the front, but it's time for us to lead from the back. But it just didn't feel big enough. Pretty much. All the way through July, and those numbers are showing there have been more than 300 arrests at those encampments and about 400 sexual assaults. Oh, boy. That's a lot of sexual assaults. You don't still have that ringtone, do you? I don't. It's pretty much been the Wild West out there. We've got to change that. An unsupervised section of Sacramento County, its sheriff says he's trying his best to protect. I'm going to do what's good for the citizens. Sometimes when you do a small market story, you're not sure if that's that guy's actual voice or if that's his reporter voice. (laughs) An unsupervised section of Sacramento County, its sheriff says he's trying his best to protect. I'm going to do what's good for the citizens of Sacramento County. And if it makes somebody mad, so what? I'm not sorry. The sheriff's office. Sorry, not sorry. I'll tell you, it seems like they elected a good DA and a good sheriff up there. The sheriff's office shared new data collected from January through July of this year, pinpointing the dangers the unhoused faced inside their encampments. In that- You're telling me it's not safe to camp on the street? Breaking news. You have the sounder ready to go? <laughs> now, breaking on AM 790. K. This just in the KABC, it's unsafe to live in a homeless encampment. In that time, the numbers show about 930 people were approached by the sheriff's homeless outreach team. About 600 citations were issued, 220 arrested for misdemeanors, more than 100 picked up on felonies. If there's criminal activity, we're going to deal with it. Whether you're housed or unhoused, you deserve to live in a safe place. Sheriff Jim Cooper says the living space is unsafe for unhoused women, 420 of whom were physically abused and 400 who were raped, according to the sheriff's report. Yikes! That's a lot of raping. And to see these numbers... And to know that it's vastly underreported by two or three times, I mean, that's high, significantly higher. And what frustrates me is those advocates, those navigators, when they're out there, and they've been out there a long time, they've never thought to ask that question. They have no data of statistics. Wait a second. So all the homeless advocates aren't asking the people that they're helping if they've been sexually abused while in the encampment that they encourage them to stay in? No, because there's a homeless industrial complex where they all want them to live on the streets forever so that they keep getting funded. They've never thought to ask that question. They have no data of statistics. That's just false. Bob Erwin Bush, a 40-year homeless advocate in California. If you've been doing this for 40 years, that's a problem. The man can retire off of being an advocate for the homeless. He's not too thrilled with the sheriff's dig. The sheriff should have known this if he would have looked at any of our reports. The executive director of Sacramento Regional Coalition to End Homelessness. All right, how much does this guy make? Okay, if you've done that for 40 years, this is your career. This is what you went to school for. You got some useless degree in social work or social welfare or whatever it was that you were studying when you sat next to the fake doctor. And this is the job that you took. And the problem is infinitely worse than... When you, far worse than when when you started. This is what you're leaving with. You completely failed at your career. You failed at the beginning. You failed in the middle. You failed at the end. And the homeless population exploded the whole time you were there collecting a paycheck. But is that his mission statement? What if the mission statement is like most businesses, profits or nonprofits, grow your customer base? This guy has thousand times more customers than he had 40 years ago. By the way, is worse or even a word? No. Okay. But we're in radio. It's fine. (laughs) I feel like Don King. I just made something up. No one's tuning into this station for grammar. The executive director of Sacramento Regional Coalition to End Homelessness posts an annual unhoused death report his outreach team devises after speaking to unhoused Sacramentans about violence inside of their encampments. I would guess that the percent of of rape of homeless women approaches well over 90 percent and yet you encourage them to stay in the encampments you know what you are you're a pimp that's what you are 
because you enable all of this to happen. You know it's happening, and you're okay with it. You, sir, are a pimp. This is nothing. This is nothing new. Well, okay. So what have you done to prevent this if 90% of the women in these encampments claim that they're getting sexually assaulted? Nothing? P-I-M-P, pimp. Well over 90%. Oh, at least. A staggering statistic. At least. A staggering statistic, Erlen Bush tells Fox 40 feeds the cycle of substance abuse. So I'm hearing that. I've had many homeless women say, you know, Bob, I was never. Wait, this a- is a man? Yes. Oh, my God. At least I'm, sh- I, you know, I'm only hearing the sound. We're assuming it is. Well, Bob, is that with one O or two? Hey, could be short for Bobby. I've had many homeless women say, you know, Bob. You have had a problem this week of accidentally misgendering people. I have. I've had many homeless women say, you know, Bob, I was never a meth addict until I became homeless. Now I take meth to stay stay up all night so I won't be attacked. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah, that's not why they're on meth. So the reason so many people are addicted to meth in the homeless encampments is because that way they stay up all night so they won't get attacked while in the homeless encampments. That is quite a stretch. I was never a meth addict until I became homeless. Now I take meth to stay stay up all night so I won't be attacked. What about the 90% of people who became homeless because they were a meth addict? I think they take meth because it makes them feel good. And the sheriff says a lot of the trouble that his homeless outreach team is running into when they get out to these encampments is trying to get these unhoused people at the encampments to buy into the mental health support as well as the substance abuse help that they are offering. Can we stop trying to make this crap voluntary? This used to be real simple. Pre-Prop 47, we had something that we voted overwhelmingly for back in 2000 called the drug court system. You arrest somebody for being strung out on meth and they either get to go to rehab mandated by the court or they go to prison exactly if you're gonna sit there and argue with someone who's high on meth and try to convince them that rehab is the way to go that's a loser's game what you need is a paddy wagon and a straitjacket these unhoused people at the encampments to buy into the mental health support as well as the substance abuse help that they are offering these people. And Erlen Bush says that is somewhat to be expected because a lot of these people suffer from trauma and that trauma is triggered when an officer hands them the help, the resources that are available right after writing them a ticket. Wait, now we can't traumatize the homeless people because a police officer is the one talking to them? Can we just stop with this? These people are hopeless. And that trauma is triggered when an officer hands them the help, the resources that are available. I thought the trauma was triggered when the meth started rotting their brain out and their teeth. Hands them the help, the resources that are available right after writing them a ticket. Reporting live in Sacramento County, covering local news that matters. I'm Asa Morrow, Fox 40 News. See, this is why we need a clean sweep of all the people in office here. Because they are incapable of dealing with it. They just are. They say it's a housing problem. They say the cops triggered them so they can't have any interaction with the cops. They say they take the meth so they can stay up all night so they won't get raped again. You can give them all the money in the world. If that's the way they see the problem, you're never going to get progress. You just aren't. They say, oh, pass more taxes. Pass more tax hikes so we have more money. And if you give us more money, we'll put a dent in the problem. No. You won't put a dent in the problem. The problem is going to get worse as long as you're in charge. Look at this one fool. What was his name? Boob? (laughs) Bob. Whatever. (laughs) That's what I said. So Boob has been at this for 40 years as a homeless advocate in Sacramento. And over the course of that 40 years, Boob has made the problem worse. And Boob has no idea how to fix it, but he regards himself as an expert. And so does the news and so do the politicians that fund his worthless organization. And he wants these people out on the street because if they're not living on the street, then Boob might have to get a real job.
Did you feel the ground shake during the break there, Randy? I did not. What did I miss? Well, I looked up. I saw the windows rattling. I saw the television shaking. Car alarms were going off. I thought we were having an earthquake. So I opened up my handy-dandy laptop here to find out where the earthquake was centered, what was the number on the Richter scale, all those sorts of things. It wasn't an earthquake that I felt. What was it? It was Lizzo being dropped. (laughs) Dropped by the NFL from Super Bowl halftime show consideration. Oh, come on, NFL. She's not going to be the halftime entertainment this year. Well, I don't know if they picked anybody yet, but I guess they won't even consider her now because of that story that seems a little out there. Well, they said that she was fat shaming her employees. Doesn't seem like the Lizzo I know. No. That's not bad bitch o'clock. That's thick 30. And if Lizzo is fat shaming you, it's not like you're without a comeback. And the strip club story, that seems really stretching it. How dim-witted do you have to be if you're being fat shamed by Lizzo and you can't defend yourself with words? I stand with Lizzo on this one. Yeah.